So last time I gave you guys some homework to do. That was interesting. Yeah. The I don't know if anyone can anyone hold up or does anyone feel like they had a right answer? No. <laughs> okay. So let's go through and try and draw some of that stuff. Does that sound good? That's probably your best bet. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the first one you had to draw, what was it, a, a 1D chain for lithium? Yeah. So, sorry, get this thing set up. Okay, so that first problem. Also, for like all of this section, we shouldn't be using our normal book, correct? Uh, right. Yep, you'll all want right. to use the Hoffman book that I saw. All right, that makes a lot of sense considering there was nothing on this in our book. No, it's it's pretty minimal in your book. Traditional inorganic chemistry doesn't really have a ton of that stuff in it, so uh, we're right. introducing it because it's becoming more commonplace for people to see the Calvin chemistry to no band structures. Like that. All right. Uh, oh, this but this is a lithium chain, not a hydrogen chain. So if we go to draw that, we're going to treat our system the same. We're going to have our lithium atoms. And we're going to space them apart by A. So let's go to draw that band structure. We have K down here. What's our y-axis? Yep, E. And what are what are our limits for K? What are we going Zero from and to? Pi over two. Yep. Going from oh pi over A, right? Zero to pi over A. Okay. So now we have to draw these things. How many orbitals do we have? Let's print out the electron configuration for lithium. Isn't it two? No. What it, yep, it's one S two. And then followed by what? 2s1. Yep, 2s1. Okay, so how many bands should we draw in our system? Two. Yep, we need to have two bands. Two orbitals. That means two bands. Okay. Uh, let's try to plot the band structure. We have that first set of orbitals, so it's the 1s. Uh, let's look at, we're going to draw the block functions. 1s. Are we plotting both the orbitals because both the orbitals are involved in bonding? Or? Yes. Yep. We're going to draw both of those orbitals. So the 1s block function, remember there's no sign change. So it looks like that. What about at pi over a? How does that block function differ? This thing will ever focus. It's gonna be anti-bonding. Yep, so oh, what is it? Plus minus, plus minus. Yep, plus minus, plus minus. Nope. Oh, it should be a minus, geez. Sorry, no coffee today. <laughs> the struggle. I know. <laughs> the struggle is real, man. <laughs> All right. Now, when we have uh, this, what does the block function look like here? Bonding, anti bonding, non bonding. This is, wait, that one bonding. Yep, bonding. So it's going to look like this, right? Where they're all in phase. What about this guy? Anti. Yeah. We could have colored them the other way, but I just picked this one. So what is that band structure going to look like for the 1S? Could you show me up here? So one's going to start from bottom to top. Yep. So we got one that goes from bottom to top, right? Goes Which would be the bonding or regular. Right. And so this guy here, that's the 1S. Yep. 
And that should be lower in energy than the 2s, right? We know that about atomic yeah. orbitals, so that's the way it should. Uh, what about the 2s? What's the 2s going to look like? Could start from uh, bottom to top, but or technically top to bottom. So you're saying it's going to run this way? Yeah. What are those? Let's look oh, at the block so. functions. Take it back. <laughs> So 2s. So again, at zero, it looks this way. Oh, okay. So what's the, is there going to be a sign change across these orbitals and what are their shapes? Uh, those ones right there? No. Right. So it's going to look the same as that 2s. Same yeah. thing at pi over. So it's just going to start higher. Yep. And then higher. Right. So we're going to, it's going to look exactly the same. It's just going to start higher. So and that guy is our 2s. OK. Now, the other thing we have to do is, is we have to indicate the Fermi level. Looking at your um, electron configuration over here, where's the Fermi level going to be for this system? I right in between them. Right in between here? Yeah. No. No? <laughs> what do you think, Tara? I don't know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I thought it was between them. <laughs> yeah. So we want to look at the electron configuration, right? Isn't it, it closer to like one S or something? More electrons. So how many electrons can each band hold? Two. Two. Yep, they can hold two. So this first band has two. Has two, so the Fermi level's got to be higher than that one, right? What about for this two S? Only has one. Only has one, so where's the Fermi level gonna go? Right in the middle. Yep. Oh, Got him. Yeah, right there. Josh is missing out right now. He okay. wouldn't have found the answer anyway. Just kidding. <laughs> right here. Yeah, I just got here. Oops. Hey, it is. So we heard that. <laughs> Good. He was missing out. So, do we want to cover the answer to the other question then? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was interesting. Also, I thought that one was the easy one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one sec. I gotta figure. Wait, you said that the Fermi level was right in the middle. It's in the middle of that two S. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I. Okay. Let me get. I have to pull that thing up. I can't remember. Did I give you guys an octahedral system? Yes. Or... Okay, so it's octahedral. Yeah. But it was like D5. Uh, yeah. So, molecule. so it was a D5. Um, oop, I got to get back to zoom. Can't see my room. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, in that case, he had a D5, but we said in terms of the ligand field, which it, it's sort of related to like MO theory. We'll get to it in a minute. But the the ligand field looked like this. Where this one was our dz squared, this one was dx squared minus y squared, this one's dx, z, dy, z, dxy. Right? Yep. Okay. Uh, the other thing we said is, is uh, we're assuming the chain travels down the z-axis. So if these are our they're organized kind of like this, we're going to try and draw them octahedral. Oops. So L, L, one coming out. One going back in. So what does D5 mean then? 
A D5 means it has five D electrons. Okay. Yep. We haven't gotten so the it only to fills a certain level. Right. Okay. So we now right then. when we go to draw our band structure, we're saying the D or the Z axis is this way. So we're gonna have all the D Z squared orbitals lined up with one another. Now what we have to make sure to do is make sure the center of the band matches these guys. So if we if we take the derivative of that point or the derivative of that slope, it should be zero at these points. Okay, that'll make more sense in a minute. Let's go to draw it out. So again, we have our band structure. What's the unit or what's our axis on this? K hat or K vector. Yep, K vector, what's it go to? Zero mm -hmm. pi over A. Yep. And what about on this side? E. Yep. Little arrow. All right. And looking, we said we just have a set of d orbitals. How many bands should we draw? Five. Yep, there should be five. They might overlap with one another, but there should be five. <laughs> so you'll still draw them even if they're not being filled? Um, yes. Because oh, okay. they're, still, they're still there. Okay. Okay. So... Uh, what orbital do you guys want to look at first? Dz uh, squared. Okay, let's look at dz squared. Uh, let's consider uh, the block function at pi, so we'll do dz squared at zero and at pi over a. And we're just going to draw what they look like. So when you say draw the block function, do you just mean like chi zero plus chi one plus chi two? Yes. As Compared to, because you, you like you don't want them actually drawn out like you've done in class. Well, no, you can do either. We're gonna draw oh, them out. Just but so it, we, it's not wrong to just do that. Chi zero, chi one, chi two. Nope, oh, that's completely okay. Yep, you just have to know like, is a sign change a, a more energetically favorable thing or a less energetically favorable interaction? Okay, so with this one, what's gonna happen? to the next orbital. It would be the same as the first. Yeah. And so on, right? Yeah. OK. Uh, in this case, we got pi over a. What's going to happen with this block function? It would be the opposite. Yeah. Okay, so is this band going to run up or is it going to run down? Up. Yep, it's going to start from low energy and go to high energy. The dispersion is going to be pretty large because there's, they're pretty close to one another, so the overlap is good. So it has to be high in energy. Let's say that energy points somewhere along here. That's where all our dz squared will be. Now, if you drew this, like you didn't draw it exactly right there, that's OK. The other thing is, is this shouldn't, this shouldn't taper. It should just go straight like that, like crummy and dry. All right. Do you want to draw the other orbitals, or do you feel like you could tell me which way they'll go? Well, I could tell you. OK. So. D, uh, dx squared minus y squared. Is that going to run up or run down? And what type of overlap is it? Oh, yeah, these are this is sigma. Run up. Yep, runs up. Delta. And what type of overlap? Overlap. I believe it's delta. Yep. So what does that mean about its dispersion? It would be lower. Yeah. Oh, so, look at the other one. And it should be, it should run up, right? So that will be where the dx squared minus y squared is. Then the other three of your centers should be about even with one another. Let's consider the dxy. 
Will that run up or will that run down? D X Y goes up. Yep. And it's also little delta. Yep. Delta. So it's got really, it's got bad dispersion. It's going to run up. And I'll be over here. Uh, what uh, what other orbitals are we missing so far? Uh, we're missing D X Z D X Y D Y Z. Yeah. So Y Z D X Z. What about these guys? What do they do? They're degenerate. Yeah, they're degenerate and they both run down. What type yeah. of overlap do they have? Hi. Yep. So there are actually two that are hidden here. And their dispersion's greater, so it'll be wider at that point. The X. Oh, I was so close. Okay. Now, what type of metal did we say we had? D5. The D5. That means we have five electrons in total. Where would you suggest to put this Fermi level? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Right along here? Yes. Well. Because there's five different orbitals, so there's space for 10 electrons, but only five exist. Right, so but how many, how many electrons does each band hold? Two. 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 So if we were to put it here, that would actually be a D6 metal. Because there are two bands here, there's one here, that's a total of six. So where should we put that Fermi level? Between the bottom two. Yeah, so right, right somewhere, you're saying right here, Tara? Yeah. That would be a D3 metal because it's no, cutting no, no. each. Yeah. <laughs> so we're narrowing it in. Uh -huh. So where do we want to go? A little bit above. Yeah, we want it somewhere like above here a little bit. We want it over halfway of this D Z because those orbitals, um, they're not they're not exactly half filled. So we want it to be somewhere about there. Okay, so that was a bit tougher of a problem. Did anybody feel like they drew the band structure correct? That's like the biggest problem. I think I drew it right, yeah. Halfway there. Halfway there. If, it, if it's close and doesn't look exactly the same, you're gonna get full credit for that portion. So don't panic. Um, it took me a while to do, but I think I got it right. Okay, good. Um, I have a quick question. It might be kind of outside yep. the scope. So we're saying this is D5. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't it have to be high spin then? And then would that mean that each band had one or each orbital had one electron in it? So it wouldn't distort? In or this, would this be the same if it was a D4H system due to distortion? This is um, what we've drawn right here actually isn't a high spin case. So um, we're drawing a low spin case. In this situation, yeah, I understand that. But when did um distort due to a uh, Paris distortion because of the degeneracy? Oh yeah, yeah. Typically they would. Okay. But in this fictitious system, well, actually it depends. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Nature, if it can help it, doesn't really want things to be a metal, but they are, and. In some cases, it just has to be that way. So I would guess it would distort away from the perfect system. Also, I don't think there are many D5 uh, octahedral complexes, too. So that, that also helps. It was just a fictitious system. OK, just wondering. OK, yep. thank you. Yeah, no problem. OK, so last time, what were we talking about? Or are there any more questions about those problems? Yeah. Okay. How come you drew the DXZ and the DY one? Why did you draw that like wider than the DXY? So down this guy? Nope, down. Yeah. Why is the one going down? Why is that one like wider than the other one? Or is it not supposed to be? It, it is meant to be because in this case, these two have pi type symmetry or pi type overlap. And these guys have delta. 
what do you know about the like the overlap of delta? That's is it good weird. or is it bad? Bad. Yeah. Yep, like you said, it's you, you're about to use the better word poor, which is probably the, the more official way of saying it. Um, so yeah, you were you're right. That's why they're they're spread out that way. Okay, like this one, actually I probably drew this one way too wide. This okay. is bx squared minus y squared. Any other questions? Okay, what were we talking about last time? <laughs> I know it feels like we're rather than go. Blotch functions. Yeah, we're looking at block functions and specifically of what system? Of a 2D crystal lattice. Yep, a 2D crystal lattice of hydrogen atoms. So, and we drew out a couple of those. Uh, And we had two systems or two directions. We had x and we had y, which means we're going to have two k vectors. So, what is the value of kx for this set of block functions? Zero. Yep. This one? Zero. Yep. What about? That one's off kilter. There we go. Better. Zero and pi over a. Yep. Doctor. Doctor. <laughs> well, which actually before we before we say which one zero. X. Which one is zero? No, no, might as well. Oh, uh, why, why is zero? Pi over, over a. <laughs> yep. Because they're changing phase across the x direction the y direction yeah. the remaining in phase. Okay, so everybody felt I'm comfortable. So confident. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about that first brilliant. <coughs> so the brilliant zone for like a one dimensional system was just where you had unique values at k, it went from zero to pi over a for a 1D system. But things are a bit more complicated in multiple dimensions. So we're going to say, what does the first? Oh, well, we'll just say the brilliant zone look like. <laughs> A cat's attacking the outside door. <laughs> Let giblet in. Yeah. Here, I'll bring her in. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment. Yeah. I think it's going to be Giblet. Yes! Cool. John, have you met Giblet? No. I'd be Why pregnant. would we have met Giblet? <laughs> yeah. No, John. Oh, my gosh. I didn't oh, expect her to be white. Oh, yeah. How cute. She's. We'll see. Normally, she likes to climb up on here. Oh my god! I know my cat always like, lays on my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> now she's gonna be attacking everything up here. That's one for your online classes bingo card. Cat comes on screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what probably. Book. Hey, get out of here! Get off that. <laughs> the camera. All right. <laughs> just thought I'd walk across. Just lie down. All right. Get out of here. You're gone. It's a good dad. <laughs> <laughs> he throws it. <laughs> uh, would have had enough of her sometimes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, the, the first brilliant zone for a 1D system, it was a lot. What's it going to look like for a two-dimensional system, our two-dimensional system? Two 
And let's pretend X and Y are equal to one another. So. Is it still going to run up from bonding to anti-bonding? It is. Oh, we're not talking about the band structure right now. We're just talking about the shape of the Brillouin zone. So this one was a line. We had a line, like a line of 1D hydrogen chains. What's it going to look uh, like? A this parabola. Place? Not a parabola. Oh. Oh, so close. It's going to be a square. John's facial expressions. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, mean, I guess we're not really trying to that. describe it as a function. We're just trying to plot it. So I guess it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Square is not really a function. It was why kind of threw it's me. It's funny that you're saying, though, this facial expression. You're all seeing what I see when I'm at the front of the board. So I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so each of them have special points, and these are called uh, zone edges or zone centers. So they have special points. That are called zone edges or sometimes centers. And they have different labels. And these different labels are kind of uh, the user's choice, but to give you an idea, the one that remains consistent is the gamma point. Okay, so let's try and draw this out. So that is our Brillian zone. And we're gonna have, we're gonna draw four special points. We have the one that's in the dead center, that's known as the gamma point. We'll add the X point, we'll revive fancy X from PCAM. We'll add the Y point, which will revive fancy Y. And then we have the M point. Fancy M? Yeah, if you want to, we could, yeah, we'll call it. That's not a Y, that's a flux capacitor. <laughs> kind of looks like it. <laughs> okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep track of each of the points. I love that movie, by the way. <laughs> Time travel movies are always awesome. Except for, well, what's the one with, with Matthew McConaughey? I'm trying to think. Is like in space or whatever. Uh, I don't know. My wife and I watched it one Christmas and it was the most like depressing movie ever. <laughs> but I got I got one good Matthew McConaughey uh, joke. You guys want to hear it? Stellar. Yeah, okay. okay. How do how does Matthew McConaughey take a left? He goes, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. There you go. Come on, why? <laughs> why? He's been it's stuck not, in the house for too long. Yeah. It's not enough torture to be stuck inside, but. You guys should all make Animal Crossing and add me. I, I didn't think about that. I've seen so I much. Want... Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean make it? Do you not Animal need to Crossing do that? Animal Crossing What is that? It's so Never played Animal weird. Crossing? No. It's oh, literally like a what? mindless game. But like, what kind of childhood did you have? <laughs> Get on your iPhone and add me, Webby. Oh, you can do it on your iPhone and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I that's it was just like a Nintendo Switch. Game. I used to play that on my DS back in the day. Yeah, I love it. You still play it, John. I don't know if my DS is. <laughs> I, know, would you? I wish I did, otherwise I would. He used to say it was a millennial's dream because you'd only be able to get a house in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got these points. We have to keep track of what's happening with the K vectors at each of those points. This guy right here, the gamma point, that's known as the zone center because it's at the center. These other ones are zone edges.
Okay, so this is this is where we're starting. What's the value of kx going to be? Zero. Yep, zero. What about ky? Zero. Yep. Okay, now we're moving to x. So we can sort of think about it as like this guy. So would it be pi over a then zero? Yep. What about from gamma to fancy y? Zero pi over a. Yep. And then pi over a, pi over a. Yep. Doctor? So easy. The daily problem is going to be. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I might do something different for the daily problem. We'll so why are we saying that the hangman is zero, zero? That's just where, so right here, um, we can think about this as a coordinate system. Okay. So I should have drew this bigger, but that dash that I drew, that's at zero, zero. This right. line is along pi over a. And what's going to be the value of this guy? Negative, negative pi over a. Yeah. Right. So, and then the same thing for this axis, right? So this negative pi over a, this is this is unique k space, so the unique Brillian zone. So this just gets replicated four times in each of these directions, but they're they're all symmetry equivalent to this guy. Does that make sense? So now let's talk about what does the band structure look like. Am I okay to move this? Yeah. So what does the band structure look like? I can really see all the details on your sleeve. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Intense. I love wearing my Steve's from Blue's, Blue's Clues shirt. <laughs> I really, I was going to say that. That's definitely like a Blue's Clues looking shirt. <laughs> that looks exactly like the Blue's Clues. Uh, so when I first started teaching uh, at Penn State Baron, I wore this shirt one day, and one student thought my name was like Steve. So we just got to call Steve the rest of the time. He <laughs> didn't get it as a joke. Poor international students. <laughs> so it's a little complicated because one has to pick the path you go along. You, in, that you're traveling in the Brillian zone. Oh, except I spelled it differently. It's meant to be an I. Okay, so we could pick a path. Let's say we went from gamma to x to m back to gamma. Or could you give me another path that we could take? Gamma y m x. Yep. Could you give me another path? Hangman Y M gamma. Yep. Is this like just four factorial or something? Yeah, you can you can pick any direction you really want. We could even go to gamma to m to y to x. We can pick anything we really want. But for our sake, we're going to plot from gamma to x to m back to gamma. And since we have a square lattice, our x and our, our y are actually the same. Uh, they just change based upon uh, if 
if we're talking about the x direction and the y direction. But they're going to look almost the same. So let's plot that out. We're going to keep track of the energy. And we're going to have each of our special points along here. So the first one we're going to start at, we said we're starting at gamma. What are we going to next? X. Yep, X. Then what was the next one? M. And then finally? Hangman. Yep. Back to gamma. Okay, let's consider what the block functions look like at each of these points. I'm going to move this up for now, but we will go back to it. Is there a reason why we, just, you know, like are just kind of ignoring the y point? Is it just um, like it's going to be equivalent to the x kind of? Stuff? Yeah, exactly. If we were looking, if we were looking at another, if we were not looking at a square, right now, we would have to have another point for that y. So okay. For y and gamma, they're essentially the same. Okay. So at the gamma point, what's kx equal to and what's ky equal to? Zero, zero. Yep. So do I need to do anything here? Nope. Okay, let's consider x. What's kx equal to? Pi over a. Yep. And ky? Zero. Okay, so how am I going to make that match this guy? Where's it going out of phase? In which direction? The x or the y? In the x. Yep. So I got to color it in these guys, right? because they're changing phase across that way. And then we have M. What's KX equal to and what's KY equal to? Pi over A and pi over A. Yep. So what does that block function look like? They're all out of phase. Yeah. So if I color in this. You're like one, a diamond. Yeah, I like a diamond. Okay. Now let's hop back up to our band structure and let's consider what's happening to the energy as we move through to these curves. So we have gamma and we have X. Which one's going to be lower in energy? Gamma. Why? Because they are all in phase, so if you put it at a lower energy level. They're all in phase, so they're bonding. X, what's going to happen to X? We're going to raise an energy, right? Increase. Yeah, we're going to increase an in energy. Now, let's consider, well, we haven't drawn any lines yet. I'm just marking points here. Now, we have X and we have M. Which one's higher in energy? M. Yep. So we got to go up further in energy. And then gamma, we just return back to the point at which we were. Except those aren't even. <laughs> Shit. Very <laughs> close. There we go. Better. So all we have to do is just connect the dots. Does it kind of follow an exponential trend so it's way better. for every section, or is it like a straight line? I'm, what was that, Josh? Does it follow like an exponential trend, or does it go like a, in a straight line from section to section? In this case, it kind of does more of an exponential bend. Like it's meant to be a little more smooth than what I'm drawing, rather than a straight line. But in some in some band structures, you can't even. 
Okay. So does that make sense to people? Yep. Okay, cool. So this is another way of plotting the first uh, brilliant zone? Yes. Yep, this, that's actually what we've plotted is the first Brillian, the band structure of the first Brillian zone here. Yep. This, this itself right here is technically the first Brillian zone. And it, it's mirrored in all of these other quadrants. Cool. Any other questions? So if you have a value of negative pi over A, will it still in that sense have the same type of energy as pi over A? Yes. Yep, because if you think about like back when we were drawing band structures of 1D systems, when we went from uh, 0 to pi over A to 2 pi over A, and let's say we were plotting backwards, went to negative pi over A. This looked like that guy, right? And then we plotted this region. And what did it look like? This went back down. Yep. And then what do you think? I didn't know it was a continuous function, so I just kind of kept yep. going up. It was... So what do you think this one's going to look like? Looks like the pi a to two pi over a. Yeah. And then if we were okay. to plot further, we'd go like this. Because the problem becomes where do you find a unique function, essentially, that is not symmetry equivalent? Because in this, I don't know if you got a chance to look at those, those interactive um, broad base lattices I sent a little bit ago. But if you look in them, you see a periodic system that just extends forever. So we've got to pick a unique system to talk about something. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. So uh, now band structures are pretty are useful, but like you can see, they become insanely complex as time goes on. As we start adding more dimensions, it becomes more and more difficult to grasp what we're doing. So that's why we jump to something called DOS or density of states. DOS. So in solids and oops, there we go. In solids and surfaces, it becomes kind of pointless to talk about just one energetic state. One has to deal with many energy levels. And it's really pointless to just discuss an individual energy level because there are so many of them. Whereas in, in most in, in chemistry, like solution-based chemistry and stuff, we do care about those discrete energy levels. Energy. So therefore, we try to utilize something called the DOS to discuss energy levels. To discuss energy levels. And the DOS is defined as the number of energy levels DE or DN divided by DE, where N is the number 
of levels, energy levels per energy interval, or that d epsilon. Now the confusing thing is, is chemists chemists tend to draw these uh, densities. Oh, is there a question? Nope. Sorry, I heard a squeak. I I think my mom yelled at Ash. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's a shot caller. Stop. Oh, you're there. You turn into a chicken there nugget. <laughs> is that D N over D E or is that D? Like, yep, like dn something. over d epsilon. All right. So chemists, they tend to put the energy axis on the y and the dos on the x, whereas physicists do the opposite. where what happens is, is we're going to try to draw these same two functions. Like that, where we indicate the Fermi level and everything below that Fermi level is full. But physicists, they like to do this. I'm trying to draw the same function here, but it's not working out very well. Okay, so let's come up with some meaning behind this. Let's investigate a really simple system. We're gonna look at the densities of states of an H2 molecule, and then we're gonna move to a one-dimensional hydrogen chain. Sound good? Yep. Cool, so uh, we're gonna say, let's look at the DOS of the H2 molecule. So before we do that, we have to consider the electronic states of the H2 molecule. So uh, what does the DOS of H2 look like? Before we can answer that, we have to look at the electronic structure. And when you hear the word electron or words, electronic structure, what are we really talking about? There's a lot of answers to this question. There are, but there's there's a specific one. What are you thinking, Josh? Or John, I'm sorry. Say, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, I feel like we were, density of the electrons. Right, you could be considering density of electrons. What else could you be looking at? Whether it, what type of system it is, whether it's like a conductor, semiconductor, insulator. Yep, exactly. You also, what other things are you thinking of when you're talking about, elect, like, let's say we're considering the electronic structure of atoms. What are you thinking of? I'm just worrying about their atomic orbitals. Yeah, you're thinking of their configuration. Now, if we consider a molecule like this, when we say the electronic structure of a molecule, what are we really thinking about? Molecular orbitals. Geometry. There we go. Molecular orbitals. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. What would you say, uh, Josh? I didn't say anything. No. <laughs> okay. Aww. So let's recall the MO diagram. For H2, which I'm sure you're aware of. We've done it 10 million times. You're <laughs> probably totally sick of it. But we're going to do it again. 
because this is the ride that never ends. Okay, so we got energy. What other things do we need on this for the MO diagram? H2 and an H. Yep. H1, H2. Yeah. What else were we saying? Then you need the 1s orbital for each yep. H. 1s orbital for each H. Okay. Got that. Then you need the bonding and anti bonding molecular orbitals. Right. And an important point this bonding orbital, the energy difference is smaller than for. The anti bonding part. The sigma, sigma star, bingo, bango, great. Okay, we know that the orbitals of this guy, they're in phase with one another. In this case, they're out of phase, right? Okay, and this relates directly to. There we go. It relates directly to the density of states. This relates density of states. So if we go to plot our density of states, we're going to plot it like chemists because that's what we are. I think today. <laughs> I think the physical one's kind of better. Yeah, it's it's awkward. At least to me, it's awkward. Yeah. Morgan, you're not a physicist, are you? Uh, no, but I mean, we kind of do physics in the group. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a point where you're you're either a micro or a macro physicist. All right. I've so, seen it both ways, so whatever you prefer. <laughs> perfect. Okay, so how many states do we have in our H2 molecule? Two. Yeah, got a bonding and sigma bonding and sigma anti bonding. So how many lines should I draw here? Two. Yeah, two. One. Two. For that sigma and one for the sigma star. Now, where am I going to put my Fermi level? Oops. Probably at the 1s level. Maybe. Uh -huh. Well, we don't really have a 1s in the system anymore. We have. Uh, that's true. It's a molecular. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So um, we want to put it right at the sigma because that's where all the or yeah, the regular like the bonding one because that's where all the electrons are gonna be. That's true. This guy's filled, right? Mm -hmm. Whenever we have a filled band or a filled orbital, the Fermi level though is in between the top of that band and the bottom of the next band. So the Fermi level is actually gonna go in the middle. Exactly in between them. Yeah. Or, yeah, in between them. Um, it's, it's usually halfway in between. Okay. So that's what the, the DOS looks like for an H2 atom. And these are delta functions, Kronecker delta functions, where they're, uh, they, they fan out a little bit, but they really just stick up at a certain point. You can think of them as beads. Now let's look at the DOS of the 1D hydrogen chain. Okay, so for H2, we had to consider the electronic structure. And what did that mean for a molecule? What do we have to look at? Molecular orbitals. Yep, MOs. Now we're considering a 1D hydrogen chain. 
you still want to look at that electronic structure. But what does that mean for a solid? What do we got to look at? Not MOs, something else. Block function. Sorry, yep, block functions. Block function. Band structure. Point group. <laughs> <laughs> Space group there. We'll talk about space groups. So don't worry about that. Uh, just don't worry about it. That's why you like more, more symmetry stuff, right? <laughs> okay. So let's plot this. We remember what the 1D hydrogen chain looks like for its band structure. We got E, K, and what's K go to again? Zero. Five and it looks like whoop, that. Where are the bonding orbitals? In the bottom half. Yep. So these are what the block functions look like. What about up here? They're out of phase. Yeah. Come on, camera. Get back in. Just like this camera. <laughs> and do it. Stay out of focus, perfect. Bottom interest minus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> and they're out of phase up here, right? Okay. Where was the Fermi level for this system? In the middle. Yep. Because we have one S orbitals. Okay. So now let's go to the DOS. We got energy again, and we got DOS. Remember, we said that uh, DOS densities of states was equal to the number of energy levels over an energy interval. So we can actually think of this as like a slope of the band structure. So anybody have an idea of what this is going to look like? Or what's the slope of a flat line? Zero. Zero? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not the same as in class. Uh, I don't know. It's really <laughs> guess those kinds of questions. <laughs> the trying to make us guess ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what about do. what about for a system that that has a point that it's it's changing a very a very small amount? Or let me ask you: Are we going to have a high number of points, a high number of energy energetic states along here? Or no, the beginning be part? Or Yep, at the beginning part, right here. No, Are we going to have a high number of states or a low number of states? Low number. Nope, actually the opposite. Because there's a Ooh. bunch that are degenerate right along here. So we're going to get a bunch of high. And then we're going to get a couple up here, too. They should be even. And what happens is, is you get these kind of devil horn looking things. Or goal posts. And we're going to indicate our Fermi level still. It's going to be at that same energetic point. And all of these states are filled. Okay, so why why are these double horns here? Because there's a large number of states that are packed into this region. So the DOS looks like double horns. And these points right along here, they're called Bant Hoff singularities. Excuse me, Van, Van Hove singularities. Yep, 
basically this part of the function, it goes to infinity because it's changing ever so slightly and we're keeping track of the number of energetic states. What is that error? This? Yeah. That's just saying that uh, those, those devil horns, these points right here, these are called Van Hoog singularities. Okay. Where the density is a state shoots way up. Okay. Van Hoog, not like the Van Hoff. The, not not like right? Van, Van Hoff, like in the Van Hoff equation. No, not him. Okay. Wrong guy. Different dude. <laughs> As you can guess, probably German or Austrian, but <laughs> it is tracking. I don't know about him. Oh, I thought you were going to tell us a funny story like you always do. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I don't know anything funny about that guy. I'll look it up. I'll find something embarrassing in his past. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll dig it up. Yeah. I was uh, I was reading about uh, Paul Dirac the other day, and. He was, he was really good friends with uh, Werner Heisenberg. Uh, and uh, like they, Heisenberg was known for hitting on women a lot. Like he was a real big ladies man and he was trying to like wingman for Dirac. And he was like, hey, Dirac, you should go over there and talk to those nice ladies over there. And the rack was a, a man who was known for saying very little. And I guess he said something along the lines of, like, how do you know they're nice? <laughs> it's like, like, just completely beyond the point. All right. All right. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> there, there apparently are two types of quantum mechanics people. There are ladies' men, and then there are ladies, like, Australia. you know, there are people like Schrodinger who are super flirtatious, and then you have people like the rack that are like human robots. <laughs> Beep boop. All right. So let's see. Um, the highest points in the DOS. Are where... The slope of the band structure. Is approximately zero. It's not zero at those points, but approximately zero. So let's look at why. Let's consider this ratio, because that's what the DOS is, right? Yeah. So if we look back at our band structure, We can fit them both on there. This slope here, let's consider what's happening to these values. Where there's a large number of states, this guy is large, right? Are we changing much in terms of our energy along this point? No. No, right. So this is large, this is small. And when that happens, that leads to a peak. And it approaches a very large value. All right, cool. So let's say we're going to consider uh, the lattice of a D node. The DOS of a D node. Whoa. Didn't realize really, that's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. 
Is that me or somebody else? I have no idea. I don't want to leave their things. We're going to test. Hello. Tara, I think it's you. Oh, man. All right, no. No, we're good. Want me to mute myself? Let's see. <laughs> doc, doc, doc. No, we're good. All right. So now let's say we're considering a D, a D metal nickel. What is the electron configuration for nickel? One S two, two S two. <laughs> well, start going with it. Just the one S two. I don't even see it. nickel on this periodic table. P six. Oh my. Yeah. I found two. it. All right. Uh, yes. Yeah, so we're we're rambling. Three. If you go, let's go with the condensed. Oh, perfect. Okay. AR. Uh, so argon. Four S two. Mhm. Three D. One two. Three. Eight. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so let's no try to weirdness draw happens with nickel. What's that? No weirdness happens with nickel. No weirdness. There's no. There's no exchange or core. Well, I mean, exchange and correlation are happening, but it doesn't cause the order. Uh, not enough to. Not to be one of the weird ones like silver or copper or gold or any of the lanthanides, nacanides. So let's try to draw the DOS for this. We're only going to be, we're only going to consider these valence states. We're not going to consider the internal ones. So what type of system, how should we draw that? Let's say we have our, our cubic lattice of nickel. It extends out into space. What's our DOS going to look like? So we have to have something for the 2s, right? Which one's going to be a lower in energy? The 2, or excuse me, not 2, the 4s. Which one's going to be a lower in energy? The 4s or the 3d? The 4s. The 3d. The 3d. Oh. Well, the 4s in this case is going to be a little bit lower in energy. Yes. So we're not oh. thinking of it as being in like a complex. It's just pure nickel, straight up. Uh, it's, it's a bunch of nickels together. Okay, what about the 3D? That one's going to be higher in energy. The area underneath here, is it going to be the same that it should be for the 3D? No, because it's not filled. It's not filled, right? It's not filled all the way. What about, um, like, how many electrons are here? Two. Two. How many can the d orbitals hold up in total? Ten. Ten. So how many times larger approximately should the area of this guy be compared to the s orbitals? Four. Five. Five. Yep. Uh -huh. Is it four? You were thinking four because there's there's four. Yeah. Other, right. Yeah. Oh my b. <laughs> but we. We have a total of 10 D. So let's try and draw that. We're going to get something that looks. Like that. That's meant to be a peak. OK. Now, where are we going to put the Fermi level? How many D electrons do we have? Eight. Eight. Eight, yeah. So this guy's full. So how much of this should be filled? Over half. Over half, yep. About Four what? Tenths. Yep. <laughs> I don't even know how you would draw that on there, but. Let me fill it that way. Uh -huh. Okay. Cool. Everybody feel like they got that? Even though this is a super awkward picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know 
I could tell when everyone's faces were changing. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Didn't realize what I drew until I drew it. My bad. <laughs> okay. So um, that's about all we we have time for today. Uh, next time we're going to go into more than one atom or unit cell, and we'll be done uh, with with electronic structure. We'll then move on into uh, lattices and three-dimensional shapes like periodic systems, unit cells, after next class. Are there any questions about anything we discussed? No. no?